Good morning. So I'm just going to upload this video of the farming chapter. Um, it's the final section in the primary economic activities and a lot of you have a farming background anyway so you'll be familiar with a lot of this. So as, as you well know farming is a primary economic activity. What's a primary economic activity? A job where you're working with the land where you're working with nature and in this country farming is one of the most important primary economic activities that we have and they feed us all. So farming can also be looked at as a system, and a farm is a system. A, and a system is something that takes in inputs and it processes them into outputs. Now you could look at a factory in the same way. If I had a handbag factory, my inputs would be the material, the leather, the silk, the zip, um, the keering. The processes would be my worker putting together that handbag, making it, manufacturing it. And the output would be my finished product, so my handbag being shipped out to my customers. So a farm can be seen as the same. So on a farm, or for example in a bakery, the inputs would be milk, eggs, flour. They process it, they bake bread, they bake cakes, and the output would be the finished baked goods. So farms can be seen as a system. Um, farmers use many inputs in their farms. It depends on the type of farm, obviously. It depends on the type of are you crop growing. Are you farming animals? Um, what machinery do you need? How many workers do you need? How much money do you need? How many sheds do you need? You know, so every farm has different inputs. Um, some examples of farm inputs would be seeds if you're growing crops, such as farmers in the east of Ireland. Um, Fertilisers, um, obviously they're fantastic for spraying on the, on the, the land and making the soil super fertile and They'll give you the best crop yield that you could wish for. They're a very important input. Machinery is extremely important for most farms because you need machinery, whether it's ploughing the land or whether it's spreading slurry or whichever. So there's some very basic important inputs. The farm processes would be what the farmer is doing from one end of the year to the next, depending on the season. So it could be milking the cows, spreading the fertiliser, cutting the silage. The farm outputs are what leaves the farm potentially or... It could be what's, what the farmer produces but puts back into the farm. So he could be growing vegetables and he's selling them to the market. So they're leaving the farm. He could be um, sending out milk to the co-op, to the dairy. Um, he could be selling his beef cattle to the mart or to the local abattoir, slaughterhouse. Um, same as with the sheep. Or he could be... Yeah, I think I've covered everything there. So most farms, as you know, in Ireland specialise in the one type of farming. They're either a dairy farmer or a beef producer. Up in Dublin, you get a lot of these market gardeners. Um, market gardeners are farmers who basically grow crops and flowers, growing fruit and veg, fruit, veg and flowers. Um, you typically find market gardeners located close to cities um, and they may grow their, their fruit, veg and flowers in polytunnels or in small areas of land nearest to the city as possible because things like flowers and bouquets of flowers they're fresh and they only have a certain lifespan uh, before they start wilting and dying so you want to be getting them close to the customer so produce them close to the customer so that they're as fresh as possible um cereal producers that's another type of farmer and they make a good bit of money they grow the wheat and barley so the wheat for all the bread that we like to eat and the barley for all of the different products that need that as well so you have the dairy farmers the beef producers the market gardeners and the cereal producers the odd time then you have some farmers that are mixed farmers so they specialize in more than one type of farming so they might be a beef and a sheep farmer usually the beef will bring in the most of the money for them and the sheep farming is just to supplement their income, just an extra bit of cash. And there's no harm in that either. Um, so we essentially have to study a case study. And this is it then in this section and we're done then. So we're going to look at the case study of a particular farm in County Clare. Um, so the more you go look over this video over the coming days, the more you'll get used to the case study. So we're going to study a mixed farm and it's 70 hectares. Now, it'd be great if you remember the size of the farm, the more detail you have in your answer, the better. So a mixed farm. It's located in County Clare. Okay, so it's a mixed farm, 70 hectares in County Clare. Um, you don't need to remember this bit of detail. It's just up to 20 hectares out of the 70 are flooded 
in the winter time, obviously, because of excessive rainfall and its location and all that. You don't need to remember this. Um, I mentioned earlier that it's a mixed farm. So he's a beef and a sheep farmer. Um, the farmer himself is Pat. So you just need to know his first name. So we've studied a case study of a farm, a mixed farm, beef and sheep farm in County Clare. It's 70 hectares and it's run by a farmer called Pat. Um, just extra bit of detail, but you don't need this. He also grows some crops for the family and he might, I suppose, use them for different baking that they might need or cooking. That's fine. You don't need that detail. What you need to know about Pat's farm and what you need to write about is what are his inputs, processes and outputs. So the inputs on Pat's farm, labour. Okay, so he needs a workforce. He's a full-time worker on the farm. Perfect. Um, His wife also helps out on the farm. Okay, so she works in Innes during the week as an office worker, but she helps out with the farm accounts. So that works out really well between the two of them. So one of the biggest inputs to making this farm work is the labour. So he work works full time and his wife keeps the farm accounts and looks after them. He has a son and a daughter and when they come back at the weekend from university, they help out with feeding the animals and all that different, I suppose, basic farm work. So his son and daughter would help out at the weekend or during the holidays. So labour is one of the biggest input into his farm. He works full time. His wife manages the farm accounts and his son and daughter help out at the weekend and during holidays. The second biggest input, obviously, because he's running a sheep and a beef farm, is um, animals. So he has a herd of suckler cattle. Okay, so he has to have a herd of cattle because he's a beef farmer. Each of these cows... Now, I mentioned in the previous one a suckler cattle, and just in case you're totally lost on what that is, each cow that he's bought into his farm produces one calf every year. The calf will suckle on the cow then for months after they're born, and the calf will get fatter and fatter and fatter, and that's really good. You want them to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Be good quality um, cow eventually, and you'll sell that at the mart or to the abattoir or whoever, and you'll get good money for it. Okay? So he's... One of his biggest inputs are animals, and it's a suckler cattle that he buys in. So each cow produces a calf. The calf suckles on the cow for many months, and they put on weight quickly. He obviously also buys in the sheep. Um, it was always kind of a tradition, um, probably stemming from his father's time. You'd do your beef farming, but you do a bit of sheep farming on the side. And it also supplements his income in case the price of the beef drops. And we've seen that a lot in Ireland in the last few months, the price of beef dropping. Okay, so as regards the sheep, he's busy enough with them as well, especially in springtime. As you know yourselves, it's lambing season in springtime. Okay, machinery will be another big input into his farm. He has two tractors and several pieces of equipment. Okay, so just remember the basic name. So he's two tractors, a fertilizer spreader, a trailer, a front loader. Okay, so if you're remembering even two of them, that's perfect. So he's two tractors, fertilizer spreader and a trailer. And that's lovely. Okay, so his main inputs were labour, animals, and the machinery. Some other inputs to remember, animal feed. Obviously, he needs to keep them fed as well in the winter months when they're inside in the shed. So some animal feed. Seeds for reseeding the grassland. So he wants that grass to be nice, good quality, nice and thick and plentiful. Um, he's a lot of really, you know, a big herd of cattle out in the land a lot of the year. So he really wants good grassland. So that's an input. He's to buy that in. Electric fences to keep the animals in on the land. Um, some specialist inputs then would be the vet. Okay, the vet has to come into the farm, um, test the animals, make sure that they're okay. Um, Chagusk, if you haven't heard of them before, they're a farming association. Um, they advise you on how to run your farm, um, farm management. They give farmers advice on whatever, you know, on the running of the farm and in times of crisis and farm prices, etc., um, the IFA is the Irish Farmers Association. Most farmers would be members of the Irish Farmers Association and they hold meetings in Ireland and abroad. And you can even go abroad on farming tours and you can check out different farms and how they're run. And, you know, that's really beneficial to farmers here in Ireland to see could they do things better or how is it done differently abroad. So they're the specialist inputs, um, the VET, Chagusk and the IFA, the Irish Farmers Association. Um, and also 
the farmer, most farmers will buy in the farmer's journal. Some of you probably get it in school there or you will get it through Ag Science later on. So there are the inputs into Pat's farm. You have the labour, the machinery, the animals. You have other inputs such as, we'll say, the seeds for seeding the grassland, the animal feed, the electric fences, and then you have the specialist inputs such as the vet, the chagask, the IFA. The processes of Pat's farm, you can divide them according to the seasons. So in springtime, the lambs are born. Okay, I said that to you earlier, spring is a very busy season for lambing. So in springtime, he's running two different types of animals here. He has his sheep and he has his cattle, his beef cattle. So his lambs are born in springtime. His calves are born. So he's got the two animals being born there. So his lambs are born and his calves are born. The farmer spreads the fertilizer then in the springtime as well. Okay, so he's got the lambs are born, the calves are born, and he spreads the fertilizer. In summertime, he can put the animals out to graze. The weather is lovely. Because he puts them out to graze as well, this is also the breeding season. And he needs that. That's important because he needs the suckler cattle every year. And it's also a good season to cut the silage. So he has feed for the winter time. Okay. So in the spring, the lambs are born, the calves are born. He spreads the fertilizer, makes the land nice and good and plentiful and healthy. In the summertime, he puts the animals out to graze the land. They breed and he cuts the silage. In the autumn or in the winter time, then, um, I suppose he houses the animals indoors, um, keeps them in out of the cold, and any animals that he wants to sell off at the mart to make a few pounds, he does that in the autumn or the winter time. So they're the processes of Pat's farm. You could also say he repairs machinery and repairs broken fences in the winter time as well if you wanted to. The outputs of his farm, then, the major outputs are the animals, so cattle and lambs, selling them at the mart or to whoever. So he sells his young cattle as weanlings at the marts in Innes in the autumn time. Remember as much detail as you can. So he sells young cattle or the weanlings at the mart in Innes in the autumn. Um, when he sells it to the mart and they sell it to the butcher or the supermarket, his name will appear then on the meat product on the front of the meat that you're buying in the packet because we have to have traceability. God forbid if anybody got sick from a bit of meat or anything, you'd have to be able to trace the meat back. So, it's, you know, have a look out for that in the future when you're looking at chicken that you're buying in the supermarket or turkey or beef. Have a look at the name of the farmer in the front of it. They'll hopefully be local, not from abroad. Not that, you know, we have any problem with meat coming from abroad, but it's nice to buy it locally. Um, so you can see a picture of a super value and a farmer's Sean McSweeney, McCroom County Cork. So it's nice to see where your meat is sourced from. Um, so that's the, the beef cattle and the young cattle are sold at the mart. Lambs are bought by the local butchers, okay, so they sell them in the butcher shop and they sell them to the hotels. So the lambs are bought by the butchers in the local hotels because lamb is a very good, it's seen as a very good thing to have in a menu. And then um, an output would be slurry, but that's kind of going back in as an input again, as an organic fertilizer, saving the farmer money. So that's a really good thing. Okay, so I hope I explained that okay.